Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Educating one's children against predators, pedophiles, and molesters. An unfortunate reality of our generation is the known and growing epidemic, which has seen greater light in recent years, of pedophilia in which no Jewish community has come unscathed. In this halacha we will deal with the halachic basis and perspective of guiding and educating one's children against the threat of predators, pedophiles, and molesters. One of the basic principles of Torah Judaism is Kedusha, Kedushim Tiyu. A Jew is required to be holy, to live a holy life, and as Rashi explains in the Chumash, and as explained in other Mepharshim, this is not just a generalistic statement, but refers specifically to Kedusha regarding sexual morality. Now the Torah is well aware of the challenges people have in containing sexual lusts and hence provided a number of guidelines which are meant to prevent a person from falling prey to his instincts or for that matter to falling prey to the sexual gratification of another individual. In living with this standard of the Torah to keep guidelines to distance oneself from falling prey to sins of this nature it's the responsibility of parents and educators to educate children and students in a clean and kosher way regarding the dangers of predators and to give them guidelines and how to beware from it so they do not fall prey to individuals and so they stop it before it progresses. When one deals with the topic of molestation, there is an added severity towards this oblig- obligated responsibility of a parent and that it is, it is not just a matter of tznius and morality which every parent is obligated in bringing up his Jewish child in and educating him to distance himself from immoral behavior or falling victim to immoral behavior. But in addition, this is included in the basic responsibility a parent has in keeping his child safe from physical dangers. Just as a parent must teach his child how to cross the street or a school or home, family must rehearse fire drills for safety reasons. So too, children must be educated in the above for their own physical safety. In addition to the religious reasons of tznius and morality, the enormous damage that child molestation can potentially cause the innocent soul of a child is indescribable and the statistics of the potential effects speak for themselves. Having effects that include but are not limited to self-blame, depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, self-esteem issues, sexual dysfunction, addiction, self-injury, suicide ideation, which can eventually lead, God forbid, to attempted suicide. According to the above, educating one's children to beware from predators is a halachic responsibility for two reasons, A, due to morality and sneers, and B, due to safety. In previous generations, this subject was avoided. Parents and educators didn't discuss it with the children or students. It was viewed as taboo, not comfortable to discuss, better left ignored than brought up. And some even came with a claim of piety that it is better to keep the child sheltered from such knowledge than to even hint to him that such depravities exist. Unfortunately, the spread of this epidemic and the spiritual and physical destruction it has caused and continues to cause to the innocent children who fall victim cannot allow people to stay silent any longer. By lifting the level of awareness of our children regarding this matter, we put a deterrent in allowing our child from falling prey to it, as well as put a deterrent against a predator, making him think twice before he ever tries to lure a victim. We will now focus on the halachic basis in greater detail of this obligation of educating one's children and oneself in distancing oneself from entering into situations that can lead to immoral behavior. And Amir Tashem in part two of this halacha, we will give a summary of practical guidelines and advice of what children should be taught and educated in in light of the above requirement to give them the tools and awareness to get out or stop a potential attack. The Gemara in Avedah Zara 15b, 36b, and Shabbos 17b explains that one may not give over his child to a Gentile man 
as the Gentiles are suspected of various immoral behaviors, included homophile relations, otherwise known as Mishkav Zohar. And the question comes up as whether this applies as well to a Jew. May a Jewish male be in Yichud, be alone with another male? The Gemara in Kedushin 82a brings the opinion of Chachamim who state that the Jewish people are holy and are not suspected of Mishkav Zachar, of homophile relations, and thereby there is no prohibition for a man or child to be in a state of Yichud with another man, and so is coded in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Mechaber and Evan Ezer 24.1, based on the Rush and the Rambam and Isuri Bia, and so is the final ruling. That by a Gentile it is forbidden to hand a child over to a Gentile due to the above suspicion, while by a Jew it is permitted. However, adds the Rambam, the Mechaber, and the Torah, and the Shulchan Aruch, that a man who distances himself from having Yichud, even with another Jewish man, is praised. Harei Zemeshubach. And writes the Torah that this includes even male relatives, uncles, cousins, etc. That distancing oneself from having yichud with them is a praiseworthy matter. And now comes the Mechaber and adds what we can define or describe as a halachic bombshell. Stating that the above ruling of the Gemara and all Paiskim, that Menadin it is permitted to have yichud, a man to have yichud with another man, is only in previous generations. However, in these later generations, which the number of Jewish individuals who are sexual deviants have increased, a man is obligated to distance himself from having yichud even with a Jewish male. Wow. We've always heard of the Isser Yichud between a man and a woman. Says the Mechaber, there's an obligation to distance oneself today from Yichud even with a man. Meaning a man with a man. There is no source for this ruling of the Mechaber. This is his own opinion. And in truth, the Bach, the Chakas Mechaikik, the Beish Shmuel, in their commentary all qualify this ruling of the Mechaber, saying that it only applies maybe in his country. Because in his country it could be there were many deviants around. But in our countries and Ashkenaz, that this isn't so rampant, there is no need today, even today, for a man to distance himself from Yichud with another man. And it simply remains an act of piety to do so. Whatever the case may be, we learn from this halacha a very important principle towards educating our children to beware from predators, pedophiles, and molesters, etc. It's not enough for one to make darim, to make guard railings for himself to distance himself from falling prey to his own personal lusts and desires. But he also must dis- distance himself from falling prey to another person's lusts or desires. As states the halacha here, that it's either obligatory or at least praiseworthy for a man to distance himself from yichud with another man. Because that other man may be, or there is a possibility, that he is a deviant regarding these matters. Number two we learn from this halacha, that the distance is required regarding moral issues, so one doesn't fall prey to a moral activity of oneself or others, is dependent on the level of morality in one society. And thus, in a depraved society in which a certain immoral behavior has become abundant, one has the obligation to distance himself in increased measures from this behavior, even though this distance has no precedence from previous generations. Accordingly, the level of pedophilia rampant today obligates one to make increased measures, to take increased measures to make sure that children do not fall victims. In Mir Tzashem, part two of this halacha, we will discuss practical lists of advice and guidelines of what to educate children in. Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work through making even a small contribution at shuhanarcharav.com under the daily halacha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many safarim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.